Two years ago, I found myself at a crossroads that will be familiar to many of you. I found out I was gonna be a dad and all of a sudden that two-door sports car in my garage was suddenly not very practical at all for the situation I was about to go into. And I really, really didn't wanna get myself a boring soft rotor that was not really good at anything apart from being that much higher off the ground than a regular sedan or wagon. So what did I do? Well, I'm a motoring journalist. So naturally I went and bought myself an incredibly obscure lifted wagon that no one else lights. But I have a mate who was also in a similar position and he went and got himself one of these, a Mitsubishi Pajero Sport. And it's easy to see why so many people in this country are really starting to like these. They're big, they're bold, and it means the family holiday doesn't have to end the moment you reach the very end of the bitumen. Now, big four wheel drives like this one certainly aren't cheap. However, the Pajero Sport is certainly friendlier than some others on the market. This one behind me is the GSR variant and it starts at just over 62 grand before on-road costs. And that means it costs about $1,800 more than the Exceed, which is normally the flagship. Now, we can't ignore how old the Pajero Sport is. That came out in 2015, and it did see a facelift in 2019. However, as we'll talk about today, there are a number of areas where this car is starting to get a little bit dated. And of course, there's been many new updates to rivals in this segment, MUX, Ford Everest. And of course, we've got a new Prado coming around the corner. And let's also not forget that there's new Chinese rivals like the GWM Tank 300, which have certainly been impressing us. Of course, with the recent unveiling of the new generation Triton, we are expecting to see a new Pajero Sport based on that vehicle unveiled probably sometime next year or early after that. And with that, we're expecting to see an updated exterior design, a new interior base similar to the Outlander, and also that new twin turbo diesel engine. Certainly very exciting upgrades that we're looking forward to. But as it stands right now, is the Pajero Sport still worth your cash? Well, today we're gonna find out. And before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Chasing Cars YouTube channel if you wanna see more content like this. Chasing Cars, honest reviews of your next car. Brought to you by Budget Direct. So as I said before, the GSR sits above the Exceed in the range, and essentially what it does is it takes that variant and applies a black pack to it. Now it comes in three shades, comes in a black, of course. It also comes in a white diamond, which gives a really nice panda effect to it, and also a Terra Rossa red color, which might just be my favorite. So in terms of what's black, well, it's hard to tell on the shade it's in, but you do have a black grill here, black sort of underbody section, You've got black 18 inch wheels, black spoiler, and a few other little bits and bobs, which does sort of give a really nice effect on this. And I will say that although perhaps the GSR might not be the pick of the range as we'll talk about today, it does look good. There's not really any negotiating with that, in my opinion at least. But that's all for the outside, let's jump in the inside. For better or for worse, the interior of the Pajero Sport is pretty old school. So let's start with the better. Well, look, first off, this has actually got a lot of charm to it, this interior. It's a big, chunky wheel. The shifter is really satisfying, has a nice clunk when you pull it down from drive to park. Certainly a lot nicer than that little Apple Mouse thing that they have in the Everest or a rotary dial. And you also got these really solid feeling clicks here for your heated seats. Overall, it creates a very visceral experience when you're driving this car and it makes you feel like you're driving a real truck. So I don't know, that's just something that I really liked during my week with this car. Now, in terms of the rest of it, look, in the new one, we're expecting an interior that's similar to the Outlander, as I said, with updated touchscreens and all that. But what we have here is definitely sort of the older style of Mitsubishi's interior design. We've got an 8-inch touchscreen here, wide Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is great to see. Strangely, we don't have a volume knob. We've just got these buttons here. And the system that the screen is running is pretty old school indeed. It looks a little bit like Windows XP. Now, because we're in the in the GSR variant, same as the Exceed, we've got an eight inch digital instrument cluster here. However, it doesn't really do all that much over traditional analog dial. And personally, I'd rather just save the cash in that regard. Now, in terms of seats, we have some combination leather seats here, combination being some synthetic leather and some real leather. And I think they've definitely used a bit more synthetic than they have the actual real leather because these aren't the greatest feeling seats in the world. As I said, you do have heated function for these seats, which is certainly nice on those winter mornings. And you do have power adjustment for both of the front seats here, which is certainly nice to have. 
terms of visibility, look, we have a decent amount of visibility, both front side and to the back, though the back's a little bit, little bit more limited. One thing I will notice on the basic ergonomics of this cabin is that it's quite a high floor in here, more high than something like the MUX, I think. And it means that you really do need those side steps to do that two-step process when you get into this thing. So just something to consider. Mitsubishi does throw in its premium eight-speaker stereo with this grade and the Exceed below it. And personally, I really haven't enjoyed using it all that much. The quality just simply isn't there. In terms of some other misses in this cabin, well, look, it would have been great to see a wireless phone charger. That's something that we're seeing becoming very common inside cars in this segment. And like, I don't really think that this gloss black material we've got here, there's not all that much of it, but what there is here is definitely a little bit scratched. This one's only got 11,000 Ks on the clock and it has been at the mercy of murdering journalists. However, I still think that for an off-road vehicle uh, that's going to get a bit of a beating, that that probably isn't the most appropriate material because we're saying, it's getting scratched quite early on. Anyway, that's enough for the front. Let's jump in the back. In the second row of the Pajero Sport, look, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Fundamentally, I do have a good amount of room. Got a good amount of knee room, good amount of toe room. Knees obviously sit a little bit high off the seat. As I said before, it's got a pretty high floor in this one. Visibility, it's great this way. However, front widths, it's a little bit of a letterbox situation. In terms of the seats themselves, look, it's pretty bench-like. There's not a whole lot of shape to these seats. And they're kind of oddly short. Um, thankfully, though, they are angle adjustable, so you really can relax if you need to or keep them nice and upright. So I think if you're on a long trip, you probably would be okay back here. Probably not the happiest person in the world, but fundamentally, pretty good indeed. In terms of the amenities available, we have this air vent up here, which is great, really nice and close to your face. So if you've got kids who get car sick, that is going to be their best friend. You've also got some speed controls here for the fan up on the roof. That is a very nice touch. And in terms of keeping your devices topped up, we have a three pin socket down here and also got two USB ports down here. So that's really great to see. So as we've seen, there's a good amount of room here. How about let's see what they're like with some baby seats in them. So got the bassinet with me now. I've moved the passenger seat forward a little bit. And as you can see, it's a bit of a tight fit. And also the door itself doesn't open very wide. So I wouldn't call that the easiest experience in the world. But of course, being a four-wheel drive is a little bit higher off the ground, so it's certainly easier on your back. Now, another thing that I'll point out that does show the age of the Pajero Sport is the fact that there aren't top tether points on the back of the second row here. What you do need to do to fit your baby seat properly is you need to get one of these in the glove box and you need to screw it into the back of the roof here. They've got two separate points. There's three in total. One's already screwed in in the center, as we'll show on camera now. Now, as you can see, I'm not having a terrific time back here in the third row. My knees are welded against the seat in front of me and they're really up in the sky. My head is wedged against the ceiling. Not a great time for a six foot tall person like myself. Perhaps you could get some kids back here in a pinch. However, I wouldn't really recommend that. And the main reason is, is there aren't any airbags in the third row back here, which I think is pretty disappointing for a family car. So coming around to the back here, we have an electric power tailgate, which is very nice because I bet you that is very heavy indeed. And we open up to reveal a, look, decent sized boot, certainly not the biggest in segment. It measures 131 with three rows in place or 502 liters with two rows in place. And I definitely think you wanna keep this in a five seat configuration because you really do reach the limits of this boot quite quickly. Couple of school bags and I think you'd be in strife. Certainly if you wanted to bring seven people along and then go shopping, but you know, that's probably the limits of most four wheel drives anyway. In terms of amenities, we've got a 12 volt socket on this side and we've got a shopping bag hook on the other. Another thing I wanna point out is the height of this tailgate I think could be a little bit higher. So I'm six foot tall, and if I stand up straight properly, you'll notice that my head does bang against this. And if you're a particularly tall person, I think that would be quite annoying. And I've certainly bumped my head on there a few times this week. Now, quickly, let's talk about towing. The Pajero Sport is rated to tow 3,100 kilograms, which is a little bit under rivals such as the Ford Everest, which can pull three and a half ton. Though it is still above some rivals like the Tank 300, which are limited to just two and a half. So how much is it gonna cost you to run this Pajero Sport GSR? Well, Mitsubishi claims an average efficiency of eight liters per 100 Ks. However, in my week, I've seen about nine liters per 100 Ks. In saying that, however, I was stuck in a 
huge big traffic jam at one point during the week. And previously, when we've had this exact car in for testing, we've seen an average of closer to about 8.3. So not all that far off that consumption claim. Now, of course, this is a Mitsubishi, so it's eligible for a 10 year, 200,000 kilometer warranty. Of course, that's conditional and it requires you to take it to a Mitsubishi service center. So as part of that 10 year deal, Mitsubishi also offers a 10 year cap price servicing program, which is pretty generous indeed. And you're going to need to take this one into the mechanic every 15,000 Ks or every 12 months. And over a five year period, the cap price is at $2,895. So similar to using the interior, driving the Pajero Sport is definitely a pretty physical exercise. This feels like a tough rig to drive in both a good and a bad sense. So this uses the 2.4 litre turbo diesel that we've known for many years, 133 kilowatts of power and 430 newton meters of torque. Look, those aren't exactly world breaking numbers, uh, but it does get the job for the most part. It's only been a few times where I've found it a bit lacking on country roads. It seems to get a little bit breathless up those fast country road hills. It doesn't really have the pace that it needs. And I think by the time you put some weight behind this, you would be wanting a little bit more extra power. So I think it might be worth investing in a tune for this one if you plan on keeping it long term. Now that engine is mated to an eight speed automatic. Of course, Mitsubishi has given it a bump from the six speed, which is in the Triton, including the new Triton. So we do expect it to keep this eight speed design going into the next generation. And look, it's nice that you have those two extra cogs over the Triton. One thing I will say though, is that that combination of the gearbox along with the full-time four wheel drive system, it can be a little bit rough sometimes. You put it into drive, you put it into park, there's often a big clunk and bang about the whole thing. It feels like a little bit of unnecessary theater. And it harks back to four wheel drives of old, which were a little bit less refined. Uh, whereas we're starting to see those little changes made here and there to make things a bit more pleasant a driving experience and make you feel like you're not driving a truck as much. But as I said before, to you, that may be a good or a bad thing. Now, one thing I do actually quite like about the Pajero Sport, and I'll say this about the Triton as well, the outgoing Triton, is that it's just a little bit narrower than its competition. And I do find that is a real advantage when driving around town. This thing is just a bit easier to uh, put in parking spots and to get through some tight laneways. You know, you're really not as worried about trying to place a big beast of a car um, in, in central Sydney CBD like I was doing this week. And it does speak to the increased drivability of this thing. And that means that if, for example, you're coming from a normal SUV, then perhaps you won't find the Pajero Sport as intimidating. And I do think that counts for a lot. So one thing that does go against that though, is the fact that the power steering on this car, I don't think is quite strong enough, particularly at low speeds. You really got to strong arm this thing to get it around sometimes. So I do think they could turn up the wick just a little bit more to aid the drivability. But oddly, you do have some fairly great steering feel on this one. So, you know, you get some good, you get some bad. Now, one of the reasons that this car is so popular is it comes with Mitsubishi's fantastic Super Select 2 four-wheel drive system, which means you have the ability to treat as a full-time four-wheel drive system, which things like the Isuzu MUX and the Toyota Fortuna simply don't have. And that's really great to see at this price point. Really, you only see cars like the Everest to switch to a full-time four-wheel drive system and also the Prado, I suppose you can go for. Though if you want a Prado at this point, you're getting the absolute cheapest Prado, the GX5 seat. So not really probably uh, an equivalent in terms of specification, uh, interior wise at least in that grade. And that's really great to give you extra traction, but that's primarily when I mean under power. Of course, when you're not on the power, it doesn't really matter how many driven wheels you have. And that is where ESC comes into play. Now this week I had a bit of an incident where I was driving slightly, slightly damp conditions and I threw it around a roundabout which is often a little bit challenging for test cars, waiting for some understeer, there wasn't any understeer, and then all of a sudden the back stepped out and I was catching an arm full of opposite lock. And that's not really something you would normally expect. Now, of course, this is running on all-terrain tires, so you're naturally having a little bit less grip there. However, that tuning of the ESC really isn't all that crash hot. And if you're a less experienced driver, perhaps that really isn't something that's gonna be ideal for you. Finally, let's talk about the ride. Now I've driven this in the CBD. I've driven this on some quick country roads this week. So I've really done the rounds 
And one thing I've really noticed is that the ride probably isn't the best. It can be a little bit jittery at times, a little bit firmly sprung in the rear. And that meant essentially that there were some times where I went over some big bumps where I was waiting for the car to soak it up and to keep it on the straight and narrow. And instead it passed it through to the cabin and it was really quite uncomfortable. And of course, when cars don't soak up those bumps appropriately, it means that you as the driver are left to handle them, both in terms of, of your physicality and what you're doing with the steering wheel. Now, it was a little bit more compliant on those country roads, I think, particularly the dynamic side of this car. It became a little bit more fun, the turn-in's nice, and it does go where you want it to. And as I said before, it's got a good amount of steering feel, so you actually know what the car is doing when you're on the move. Now, all in all, I do think this is a pretty good car to drive. As I said, it's more compact dimensions. It makes it a little bit more friendly to drive. Um, however, that suspension is a little bit annoying at times, but of course that's down to everyone's taste. So I do recommend you go and give one a test drive for yourself. However, personally, I've driven a Pajero before this, and I mean a Pajero Pajero, not a Pajero Sport. And while that of course was a unibody vehicle, I do think it's interesting how much better to drive that car was than this one. And it'd be great to see Mitsubishi make a few little incremental improvements to just make this a more refined driving experience and give it some better on-road manners. And I think to start with, that should begin with the ESC. So I've said before that I took this in town and I took it on country roads. However, the one place I wasn't able to take it this week, unfortunately, is off-road. Um, and despite the fact that it's a beautiful sunny day today, it has been raining us out and I wasn't a big fan of the idea of going onto a trail and getting myself awfully stuck. But previously I have taken the GLS version of the Pajero Sport off-road and I was pretty impressed with what I found. The full-time four-wheel drive system meant that I could just keep it in four high and drive it straight onto the dirt tracks and it was really only when things started to get a bit tricky, a little bit bumpy um, and a bit uneven that I reached down to put it into four low. So it's really great that we have that full-time full drive system there that gives us that extra flexibility. Because of course, there are a lot of areas in this country, especially when you go regional, where things change from tarmac to dirt, tarmac to dirt, and you don't have to keep fussing around. And you can change that from too high to four high if you don't want it in full-time four wheel drive, perhaps to save on some fuel. And you can do that at speeds of up to 100 k's now. So that's really great to see. Now, once again, the narrower dimension of the Pajero Sport come into play here as well, because I went down some tracks, which you would have seen your nice new 300 series absolutely scratched to pieces by all the reeds and trees on either side. And I had plenty of room. And it meant that I could get up and around the tracks that I wanted to be in and not fall into some big ones because I simply had nowhere else to go due to the size of my vehicle. Of course, we have some other little aids and like here, like a locking rear differential, which is really nice to see. Now I've touched a bit on safety, but let's dive into that a little bit more. So fundamentally, we don't have an ANCAP rating on the Pajero Sport that has since expired. We do have seven airbags, however, as I said before, those don't extend all the way to the third row, so not super great if you've got little kiddos back there. However, we do have things like forwards AEB and adaptive cruise control. The adaptive cruise control, though, doesn't kick in at low speeds. It's not like a full stop and go system. So if you've spent this week in traffic like I have, you're not really going to enjoy that part of it. We do have blind spot monitoring, we have lane keep assist, and those all work fairly well and they haven't been beeping at me unnecessarily. So they're fairly well tuned in that regard. So in general, the safety package of this car, it's pretty good, but it's definitely in need of a new generation, I think. I've always been of the opinion that the Pajero Sport is an honest vehicle with an honest price. However, this GSR variant may be testing the limits of that phrase. Now, vehicles in this segment do tend to last a really long time, so reviewing them in their twilight years usually isn't a very pretty picture. Quite frankly, they just start to get really old in comparison to the rest of the market. And I'm not just talking in terms of technology here. The 2.4 litre turbo diesel is a little bit gutless. The towing capacity is down on its rivals and some of that cabin design is really quite old hat. However, this of course does come with full-time four-wheel drive, which is really good for its price point, And it has that amazing 10-year warranty. So there certainly is a lot going for it if you really are interested in getting one of these Pajero Sports. However, with so many new and updated rivals on the field, it's getting hard to recommend this Pajero Sport. If you are really interested in this car specifically though, 
I'd steer you towards the GLS Deluxe Edition. You can save yourself five grand, and honestly, you get pretty much everything else that this thing has, minus the cool looks and the heated seats. The last one, I do admit, I quite like quite a lot. But anyway, that is all for today's video. What do you think of my take on the Pajero Sport GSR? Do you still think it's worth the cash? Let me know in the comments down below. But for now, that's all. Thanks for watching Chasing Cars.